So good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar entitled Traditional Indigenous Approaches to Mental Health Wellbeing of Healthcare Providers Supporting First Nations Communities During the COVID Pandemic. Um, to start our introduction off, I will hand it over to Mae Cat, who's a nurse practitioner in Thunder Bay, um, to give some opening remarks. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this uh, interactive webinar uh, tonight. This webinar is a partnership with the Center of Addic for Addictions and Mental Health, CAMH, Shkabe uh, Makwa, Nishnabayaski Nation, Chiefs of Ontario, and Indigenous Services Canada. Before I st we start, I would like to recognize that our work and the work of our members takes place on traditional Indigenous territories across Ontario. We also wish to acknowledge that the office of the RNAO is located on the traditional ind indigenous territory of the Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on the territory by personally making a land acknowledgement. You are taking part in an act of reconciliation, honoring the land and indigenous heritage, which dates back over 10,000 years. I would like to now introduce our speaker for today's webinar, Gahan. Dawas Diane Longboat, BA, BED, MED, is a member of the Turtle Clan Mohawk Nation at Six Nations Grand River Territory. She is a ceremonial leader, traditional teacher, and healer. Since 2013, Diane has served as elder for the Center for Addiction and Mental Health and became the senior project manager guiding directions implementation, the CAMH strategy to improve practices and partnerships with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. She led the development of the ceremony grounds for CAMH to establish the sweat lodge, sacred fire, and medicine gardens. Diane is founder of Soul of the Mother, a healing lodge on the shores of the Grand River at Six Nations Grand River Territory and the founder of First Nations House at the University of Toronto. I remember that, Diane. Mm -hmm. um, she was published, she has published extensively on Indigenous education law and policy for the Chiefs of Ontario and Assembly of First Nations. She was the Indigenous Education Advisor to the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne and Ontario Minister of Education, Minister Nadu Harris and Minister Hunter. Recently, Diane was co-chair for the development of the Indigenous Peoples Program at the Parliament of the World's Religions Global Gathering in Toronto for 10,000 delegates. Diane is recognized as an evolutionary leader by the source of Synergy Foundation in New York City. Diane is a board member of Honoring Indigenous Peoples and a member of the Council of Elders of many organizations in North America. Let me turn over now to uh, Sabrina Morali from the RNAO to tell us about the housekeeping items before we start. Perfect. Thank you, May. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar tonight. It's my honor and pleasure to be here with you, and um, I know that the session we'll have tonight will be very exciting and invigorating. So a quick few housekeeping items before we start. You will notice there is a chat box. Um, in the chat box, you can ask any question you want. We have our RNAO team and our, our guests also moderating the panel for the chat pod, and we will have 30 minutes at the end of the webinar for our Q&A session. So if anything comes up during the time that we're together, please do ask it in the chat and or feel free to answer it if you know the answer as well. We will be archiving this webinar for future viewing as well. And 
After today, a full bio for Diane, our guest speaker, as well as the evaluation link, which will include the certificate of attendance, will be available and will be sent out electronically via email. However, before we start, we'd like to know who's here with us. And we've, it's wonderful to see all the people on the chat, but let's, let's get to know you a little bit better tonight. So how many people are actually presently physically watching this webinar with you? Are you alone at your computer or are you with one or more people? And poll will close in fifth. I think it goes till a minute, but we won't take long. <laughs> Tell them to mark, to mark, uh, Sabrina. Mm -hmm. They're answering on the chat, not marking. Oh, sorry, no. Please answer it on the poll on your screen. You can actually just um, press the button as to where um, you will fit on the screen. Fantastic, we see the numbers going up. Beautiful. Beautiful, so we'll end the poll here. And the next question is how, there you go. So there are a couple watching together, it's nice to see. The second question is, what region does your organization serve? So we'll upload that poll momentarily. There you go. And again, please mark it on the poll. Fantastic, we've covered a lot of the Northeast and Northwest. It's great to have you here. Out of province too, exciting. Welcome. Got Toronto well represented in Southwest. Uh, yeah, or, um, Sabrina, do we see that result yet? No, it's uh, 235 who responded. So just, it just keeps going up. Okay, but you're not closed yet, okay. No. The majority right now, 19% from Northwest, which is fantastic. And then 17% from Northeast, fantastic. And Southwest and Toronto, fantastic. We'll end that poll. The next question is, in which sector do you work? And so we'll load that poll. Okay. Fantastic. And the last question is, is do you self identify as being First Nations, Inuit or Métis? Fantastic, thank you. I will now hand it over to Diane to start our presentation. Thank you so much, Sabrina, and thank you, May, for that lovely introduction. Um, my name is Gahandagwas. It means she's picking sweetgrass, and I'm Mohawk from Six Nations in the Grand River Territory. I'm always really proud to share that. I want to start um, by just offering some virtual smudge to everybody um, to honor the day that we woke up this morning, that we are still part of creation, that we are doing our work, we are experiencing our gifts in all our thoughts, behaviors, and actions, and that we bring those gifts into the world to create harmony. And so I wanna honor you with some smudge. And it doesn't matter the distance or the time because the medicine will travel to where it's needed. Thank you to all of the organizations that are supporting our time together this evening. It's quite an honor for me to be here with you and to share some traditional approaches to self-care. And you know, when, uh, when you come into a, a place like this and you have an opportunity to speak to so many people, I, I never feel like I come here alone. I always feel as though my ancestors have walked before me and I'm walking in their footsteps. But I also want to acknowledge the teachers that I've had in my life that I really value who have helped me in my journey of healing and have taught me so much. And I want to honor tonight, uh, Mushunki Waden, Don Cardinal, 
from uh, Sucker Creek, Alberta, from the Cardinal family, and you would remember Harold Cardinal, his brother. Um, Don was the medicine man of uh, the family and the nation, and uh, Cree man. Um, to my Sundance chief, George Amiot, um, Oglala, from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and from the Red Cloud family. And to the chiefs, the clan mothers, and the faith keepers, and the medicine women of Six Nations Grand River Territory, I want to acknowledge you and thank you for um, teaching me and believing in me and supporting me in my journey of life. And to my teacher, uh, who is a Cuga faith keeper at Six Nations, um, always watching over me and the work that I do. I'm so grateful for, for all of that in my life. And so the things that we're gonna be sharing here this evening are pieces of um, teachings that not only have come from these esteemed individuals, but they've come from the sacred fire. And so when we speak the language of spirit at the sacred fire, the spirits, the ancestors, the helpers of the creator come and join us. So I'm very grateful for that opportunity. So this evening, we're, we're hoping that you'll understand some of the, the beautiful things that, that you can do to support yourself in this journey. And um, I'm going to ask um, my friend, Tanya, if you will advance the slide. So what I see on my screen is still the poll. So could you, is there a way to take that off, Tanya? Um, it is off. Does everybody else see the poll? It should no. be off. Oh, I got it. Okay, thanks. Right. So this, this evening, we're going to be talking about traditional Indigenous approaches to mental health and well-being. And these are things that you can do to take care of yourself, whether you're at home, whether you're in the community, whether you're with friends. And these are meant to help you to strengthen your spirit, to help you with your emotions because we are at a time and a place where we're, we've never been before and where we're living through trauma and where there is PTSD all around us. So Tanya, could you advance the slide please? So this evening we wanted to talk about the acknowledgement of feelings during the pandemic, the concerns that we have for young people, the concerns for the elders in our communities, and um, looking at your own personal safety net as a nurse. And we're really addressing this webinar to the healthcare workers in, in all of our communities. And that includes, you know, those of you who have signed on tonight who are caring for children, caring for elders, and who are generally um, supporting the well being of the community. So the other uh, piece we're gonna be talking about tonight is spiritual discipline and some of the techniques that you can use. So in our, in our way of life as Haudenosaunee people, we come from the Eastern woodlands of Turtle Island. We are the Haudenosaunee <laughs> Confederacy and the Mohawks are part of that Confederacy of Nations. So we have a very beautiful ceremony that's called Ohuna Gunawidekwa. And that, that Thanksgiving address the act of giving thanks opens all of our ceremonies, and we'll talk about that this evening. We're also going to look at some recordings and some infographics that will help you as you're teaching and sharing in the community. And those infographics have to do with how our people define mental health and well being, mm -hmm. but also what are the cultural concepts for care that we can use in our communities during this time of the pandemic. So we'll advance the slide, thank you. And to the next one. So we wanna really acknowledge how all of us are feeling during this time period. Um, everyone, I think, has a fear of getting sick because we don't know how that um, COVID-19 virus will manifest in our personal bodies, whether we're children, youth, adults, or elders. Um, we're also, living in a time where we're afraid to get others around us um, sick or, and infected with the virus. So those things weigh heavy, heavy on us. There's a change in our routines and that feeling of uncertainty really um, 
can destabilize us. And so we find ourselves living with a degree of fear. And fear often manifests as anger and irritability, sometimes forgetfulness too, because it takes over our minds. Um, we are finding ourselves sometimes because of that uh, quarantine, and I want to say that it was a quarantine, um, find ourselves lonely and uh, unable to see our grandchildren, our children, unable to have our usual social connections, because those social connections are what really keep us strong in our lives. So what, how, how those feelings come out are often um, frustration, fatigue, slow comprehension or decision making, trying, hearing things three or four times and not really being able to make a decision, and uh, your mind, it, we say that your mind is, is clouded. Trouble sleeping. Individuals have expressed that they're having nightmares and sometimes repetitive nightmares. Insomnia or waking during the night for long periods. Sometimes uh, waking at night during those um, long periods of wakefulness, the thoughts race in, in an overactive mind and it's really difficult to get back to sleep. There's a lack of appetite that the folks have talked about and sometimes overeating or not eating at all. And so we're experiencing that lack of control over conditions that are affecting our work and uh, sometimes even trying to manage our workload with all of those feelings that have kind of like layered on top of us. So the challenge of being apart from our loved ones, I think is probably the, uh, the most uh, prevalent um, issue that people talk about. And so uh, I wanna acknowledge all of those feelings that we are all going through and say how normal it is to go through that when your world is turned upside down. Thank you, Tanya, to advance the slide. So we've heard from our community members a lot of concerns for the young people. And I just wanna acknowledge young people as the real gifted ones in our generation. They're also the ones that are experiencing um, a lot of anxiety, depression, fatigue, and worry. And, and fear as they look around and they see adults also scrambling to find their grounding. Um, sometimes those feelings come out in negativity in terms of their attitudes and behaviors, anger and frustration. They're also experiencing grieving and multiple losses. And I know in my own community, there have been uh, many deaths. And so, you know, one of the one of the things about our folks is that um, we understand what it is to grieve and our ceremonies support that grieving. Um, and so the young people, we need to really show the young people how to grieve. Whatever trauma was there before this COVID-19 pandemic initiated in, um, I, I would say late November in China, that existing trauma will deepen and just recently, Stats Can sent out um, just a quick overview of crowdsourcing, and they talked about how um, trauma has deepened during the time of the pandemic, how mental health has been really challenged, and the, the, the issues that, that we've, we have before the pandemic have only gotten worse. And so, you know, we sometimes see that in acting out behavior of increasing vandalism, uh, drug use, alcohol use, and opioid use, it may increase. And sometimes we see a decrease because of lack of access, detox is needed. And um, that also, you know, when people are detoxing from substances, that also is a very dangerous condition. So we're always mindful of suicide risk and mindful of violent crimes. And we're seeing those violent crimes more and more, and especially in the, in the urban areas. Um, advance the slide, please, Tanya. We also have concerns for elders, and you know, our elders uh, can feel destabilized at this time. Elders who have chronic conditions um, may see those conditions worsen. They're not eating well, they're not sleeping well, and um, that feeling of hopelessness, that feeling of being really overwhelmed, 
being in a, in a time and a place where you see people scrambling to get to the grocery store and to the pharmacy and you know that the community is going to close because we're, we're taking care of our elders and we're not allowing um, people from the outside of our communities to come in. And so, you know, elders can feel, start to feel really overwhelmed by all of that. Sometimes the medicine dosage is off schedule as a result and elders will withdraw um, socially, they'll sleep more often or they'll stay up all night. And if there were addiction challenges before this pandemic, some, some um, elders may turn to those addictions and mental health becomes a, a deeper issue. And having said all of that, you know, one of the things that, that I want to acknowledge about the young people is that um, young people, um, and I'll use my own community as an example, young people in my community really rallied and they, they went out picking medicines and they, they picked medicines for the medicine women in our community because it was a, such a great demand for those, those spring medicines to keep our immune system strong at this point. And so the youth began to help elders. They, they gathered wood, they gathered water, they went to the, the store for elders, they delivered groceries. And um, young people who were walking in the bush gathered uh, white pine, cedar, balsam, and dropped it on the doorways of elders so that elders could use that medicine for making tea, but also for uh, smudging and cleansing their houses. So the youth were active, you know, at those, um, those safety checkpoints, not allowing individuals who didn't reside in our communities to come in because we were protecting our elders. And I really, I, I love how our people rallied around the elders as the wisdom keepers, the knowledge holders, the medicine uh, men and women, the, the chiefs, the clan mothers, the faith keepers to keep, keep them safe. So I really want to uphold the young people because as much as there are challenges, those young people also um, rallied in a way that was really powerful and taught so many people in the community about who they really are and what their gifts really are that they carry. I also uh, want to uphold the elders because having grandchildren home during this time period also meant that many elders could really step into their traditional roles, telling stories, um, singing songs, talking about the old days, what the community looked like and when they were young, um, just telling funny stories about how it was when they were growing up. Knowing, knowing all of that, and I think the elders probably didn't realize how much they actually knew and had of the culture to transmit to the young people. But really, you know, seeing them work with, with um, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the families and, and cousins and, you know, nieces, nephews who, you know, drop by in the family bubble. Really, really amazing to see the actual um, knowledge and the wisdom that the elders have when they're given an opportunity to share that. So I really want to uphold the elders because they have, they have really rallied as well during this time. They, they have been given, I think, the gift of time. The care and the love and the counseling that they've been able to do with young people has been invaluable. And in all of my work with young people, young people have said um, three things to me. That the first and foremost thing that they want in their lives is love. The second thing that they want in their lives is family. And the third thing that they want is a sense of community and belonging. So I want to uplift the elders and, and the young people for the work that they've been doing during this time of the pandemic. So your safety net as a nurse is really important because you're moving through community at this time. And this um, webinar, this time together really is all about nourishing you with strength and unconditional love and putting you in a time and a place where you begin to think about the safety net that is around you. And so I want to call your attention to um, daily spiritual tradition. In whatever faith that you express in your life. And you know, when, when you look at the medicine wheel of our people and they say there's the spirit, the mind, the heart, and the body. 
we we often you know in in healthcare focus on the the body and of course with mental health now coming into the forefront and into the center as part of health we'll focus on the mind we'll focus on the heart as the emotional part and you know the most important part of that human being is the spirit and how the creator made you and how the creator gave you your sacred name and your gifts and your spiritual mandate in life what you are supposed to do in this world with the gifts you've been given to restore harmony in the world and so however you want to express that spiritual uh, discipline in your own faith tradition to me personally um, with the journey that i've had in my life it is the single most important piece that grounds me and provides strength to me in my life the second the second thing that's so important is the loving connection with family and friends and and i say this with with a full heart that that love must be unconditional it has to be unconditional you need that as a, a helper in your life and you know that that love is takes many forms the love of family the love of friends the love of colleagues the love for the work that you do and the gifts that you're bringing into the world but, but that that love that you receive back from the people that you help so love love comes in many forms but it it is an essential part of your mental health your health and your well-being and as we find ourselves in community now you know it's time to uh, to to get more active to be out there you know walking uh dancing singing drumming visiting now now that we can visit um you know, doing some uh, some fun things in community like playing baseball some of the sports you know in a, of course in our area would be lacrosse you know to uh, to get people out there active and moving and to have fun with the with the kids and with the young people some communities have also issued uh, challenges and they've done it virtually with cooking and sewing and games and music um, they've had concerts online um, some folks have gone out um, as families to pick medicine in the bush and uh, some of the elders have uh, reminded people that we've gathered food from the bush as well so finding uh, wild foods in the bush is is really important and some of those are just coming up now in the springtime learning new skills you know as much as the horror of this pandemic is ravaging the world it has given us a gift of time and the gift of time means that we've been in sacred seclusion for a while but it also means that as those doors open now we have the opportunity to spend some time doing things that we never really had time to do before because we are still pretty much at home so of course you know fishing hunting skinning drying foods canning foods eventually you know as the gardens uh, give us their abundance smoking fish tanning hides sewing beading making our regalia learning our language you know it's those are those are things that you do for yourself to make yourself happy to, to fulfill yourself to express the culture and the pride that you have in your culture in your ancestors and in yourself next so when i spoke earlier about spiritual discipline <clears throat> i i started to tell you about giving thanks so i'm going to ask tanya just to flip to the next slide this is um this is a hold on kaliwood ekwa this is these are the words that come before all others and um in english often called the thanksgiving address or we will just call it giving thanks and <clears throat> i want to tell you a story about this because um one of the things that we forget to do as human beings is to be thankful for everything that we have been given in this lifetime food clothing shelter a loving partner beautiful children grandchildren nieces nephews a community to live in relationships within that community ceremonies songs dances like we have been given so much as a people and um so it's important to remember the creation story who are we where do we come from what is our mandate here on the earth to take care of mother earth as ngwehoe people anishinaabe people to take care of the earth 
and all the be life beings in creation, but also to take care of one another, to understand and respect one another in that great diversity of life that the Creator has made here. And so uh, this um, prayer invocation um, offering was given to us by a spiritual being that uh, was sent to remind us that we were becoming too ego filled, too much of the mind and not enough of the heart and gave us these words to, to express our humility, understanding that the creator is the owner of all life and to express our deep gratitude and our love and respect for the creator and that everything that has been made here on the earth. So this Thanksgiving address is given personally in the morning. And I, I make it my business to get up at sunrise to make this offering of, um, of thanks to the Creator. Um, I know that my children do. And I know that it is done in my community. So I wanna, I wanna just say that um, these words of thanksgiving are important for all of us. And however you choose to manifest these words of giving thanks, whether it's through a pipe ceremony, whether it's through prayers, you know, from uh, where you go to church, those words of, of humility and giving thanks to the Creator are universal to all faith traditions. So in our faith tradition, how we would express this is we would say, uh, thank you to the Creator for creating all of the human beings and the richness and diversity of all of the cultures upon the earth how magnificent they are. They are all flowers in the Creator's garden. And they may be different colors and sizes, but they're all flowers in the Creator's garden. And so we're, we're made wealthy as a human family by the richness and the diversity of that human family. That the Creator had a vision to swirl together the most beautiful dust in the universe and the pollens from the magnificent gardens of the universe and to swirl that all together in a vision to create the mineral life that is underneath our feet that we call our mother the earth, to create the great waters on the earth because there are four kinds of water, salt water, fresh water, rain waters that heal the earth, the land and the waters and the birth waters that restore and ensure the continuance of life. And in those waters are the fish that also nourish us the medicines are growing and they've come back to us in this new cycle of springtime. And the strawberry in our area is uh, the head of all of those medicine plants, the, the berry of the heart, the berry that cleans the blood system after a long and a hard winter. The three sisters, the sustenance of corn, beans and squash that are given to us to ensure that our bodies have all of the nourishment that we need. The deer is the head of all of the animals in our area, the eagle, the head of the birds, and the trees, the standing tree people, the maple trees that give such beautiful medicine in the springtime to cleanse our bodies and to uh, give us a taste of that sweetness of life with maple syrup. The four winds that refresh and cleanse Mother Earth and the thunder beings are the thunder birds that would come and through the lightning of their eyes, ionize and cleanse the air and bring those sacred waters on their back that are, that are the rain waters that refresh and restore Mother Earth. The sun, our elder brother, bringing light and life to the world and the grandmother moon watching over the female life and the, and the coming of fertility so that there is always a continuance of life. The stars representing our ancestors and four beings that are put in place by the creator to watch over humanity and to bring us teachings, guidance, and correction from time to time. And of course, you know, we look, we look to all of our teachers, and it was important to me as we began our, our time together to acknowledge those teachers. And uh, of course, to end that Thanksgiving with acknowledging the Creator as the owner of all life. So those are, those are some ways of giving thanks each, each day. So I'll ask Tanya to go back to the slide. The, no, the one before this one. <clears throat> if you could go back to um, just the one before the Thanksgiving address. 
Yes, this one, thanks. <clears throat> so this, this is an important slide <clears throat> for you because <clears throat> not only did we talk about giving thanks, but <clears throat> one of the things that we understand is, as Anishinaabe and Wihawai people is that the sacred fire is our connection to the creator. It's like a channel to the creator to take all of our offerings, whether those offerings are cloth or medicines, sage, cedar, sweetgrass, um, tobacco, sacred tobacco, uh, food offerings. Those sacred fires are the connection to the creator. And <clears throat> so there's times like when we are in this situation of the pandemic where we can't get outside to make a sacred fire, or maybe you're living in a place where, you know, you can't make a sacred fire on the balcony of your apartment building. So now what do we do? Because we want to speak to the creator for healing and for protection for ourselves and our families. And so what we do is we, we take a, a candle. And if you have one that has many wicks, that's great. If you don't, that's still okay. And you put that inside a plate or a, or a dish. And you bring your smudge and your tobacco. And as you smudge yourself and smudge the tobacco you're going to pray with, you think about the creator and the prayer that you want to make to the creator for the healing and the protection that you need and your family needs. You think about Mother Earth and how much she gives you each day for your nourishment and sustenance. And you make that same prayer to, to Mother Earth. And you put it down beside that candle. You make that same prayer to all the spiritual beings in the east, the south, the west, and the north. And by the end of that prayer time, you have six offerings of tobacco around that candle. And then you light that candle. That candle is lit as a, as a sacred fire to connect you to the creator for the healing and the protection that your family needs. No matter what goes on, no matter what, that sacred fire is the most important piece that you can do for your family. And, and be mindful that, you know, if you are around a sacred fire and it's, it is a ceremonial fire, so you want to make sure that you have a good, good thoughts and good, a good mind when you're around the fire, that you talk to it often and you make your invocations often and you teach your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren how to, how to pray out loud. So that, that ceremony of the sacred fire is really about your healing and protection. For, for those of you who are ready for a deeper ceremony for your personal transformation, doing this while you're in community, doing it um, say, while you're working somewhere, um, and maybe you can't get home because you've chosen to stay in that community until the pandemic um, it lifts and things are safe again for travel. So you may be in the community for two months, three months, maybe even four months. So make use, making use of your time means that you can get up at um, sunrise, take your tobacco, your smudge, glass of water, and go outside. And even if you don't have tobacco or smudge, you'll have your prayer and your glass of water. And you go outside if you can, and, uh, or in a facing an east window where the sun's light is coming up at sunrise. And give, give thanks. Give your invocation. Offer your prayer for that day. And you know, we're, we all, as simple human beings, we need help. And so during that time of your prayer, ask for the help that you need that day. That's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's a sign of strength and courage. And so as you, as you ask for that help, drink that water. Because as the sun's light hits that water, it turns it into very powerful medicine of protection for you. And you'll notice as you go day after day after day with your prayer and with your water, that those things that trouble you, those things that are weighing heavy on your heart, those things that you are worrying about or the fears that you might be carrying become less and less because your connection to the creator is becoming stronger and stronger and you're leaning on a force that is greater than yourself. And you're finding 
that the negativity that might be unfolding around you, um, how, how we would say, how the old timers would say, it's water off a duck's back. It just rolls off you because you become strong and your emotions begin to transform and your mind begins to also uh, become stronger. So that sun ceremony, if you do it 365 days and you don't sleep in, you work with the sun, you stay up, you know, and when the sun goes down, then you can go to bed. Um, if you work with the sun, that sun is going to give you the energy, the clarity of your mind, the strength of spirit, and, uh, and a loving and a compassionate and caring heart. The sun is going to put that medicine inside of you. And if you do that sun ceremony and you get up at sunrise 365 days, on that 365th day, the creator is going to speak to you with a gift, a vision, a dream, a, a daytime vision, a sense of knowing that is going to be a spiritual milestone in your life because you have given um, a spiritual discipline and given yourself in a way that is difficult. It's challenging, but you made it through. And so, you know, this is, this is your time to, to earn something for yourself that will spiritually renew yourself. So the sun ceremony is, is really important. Working with the sun, you know, now, now is the time when the sun is, you know, with us for probably um, 15 hours and um, maybe even longer up north. And so, you know, it's, it's a pretty rough time to start the sun ceremony, but, you know, you'll be blessed if you start it now. And uh, if you sleep in, don't worry. Start up again the next day. Don't, don't stop. Keep going. Number four is a releasing ceremony. So we talked about a lot of the feelings that we're carrying at this time. Fear and loneliness, um, being apart from our loved ones, maybe income loss or job uncertainty, or those feelings that uh, a fearfulness about getting sick or making others sick around us who are our loved ones or colleagues or coworkers or people in the community. And so um, this is a time when Maybe you have no one to talk to um, who really understands what you're going through. And maybe you're kind of a private person and you, you don't really want to share too much of what you're going through. You can always go outside. No matter where you live, you can always find a place that is very special to you where you can sit down and you can just with your hands dig a little hole if you have tobacco, put tobacco inside that hole. And it doesn't have to be a deep hole. But you start to talk to Mother Earth in a really private way about the things that are weighing heavy on you. And as you start to let go of those things, sometimes you'll cry. Sometimes, uh, you know, they'll be sobbing. And that's okay. Because you're outside, you're with Mother Earth. And all those beings that we acknowledge in that uh, giving thanks time, they're with us. They're comforting us. They have a spirit. They will help us through this time period. And so once you're finished, you're releasing. Um, cover that hole up and put a little bit of tobacco on top of it. Because if somebody walks over that, we don't want them to pick up anything negative. So we put a little bit of tobacco over that. And uh, knowing, you know, that you're, you're feeling now lighter. And you're feeling um, a generosity of spirit because you've, you've let something go. And when you let that negativity go and that fear go, there's something else that comes in in place of it. And that's the creator's love and his compassion for you and listening to your prayer. And number five, taking medicine baths or showers or drinking tea. So no, no matter where we live, there's going to be cedar trees. There's going to be white pine, spruce, balsam. You know, those are all really good medicines to boil up and you boil them for, you know, half an hour or so, put it into your bath water. And as you go into that bath water, think about um, the things that you need to release in your life. As, as the bath goes on, you're going to notice the change in, of color in that bath water. It was green at the beginning, a pale green at the beginning because of the, the medicine that you put in. But it's going to change color, and by the time you get out of that bath water, it's going to be a little bit rusty brown color looking. And um, so that, 
that means that 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 cedar has pulled it's drawn from you those things that you don't need to carry anymore so medicine baths are really important if you can't take a medicine bath you can take that um, cedar tea and you can put it in a spray bottle and when you finish your shower you can spray yourself with that um, cedar medicine and you can also make cedar tea and that cedar tea will also help you and draw from you um, the the sadness the grief the loneliness the loss um, that you're feeling the knowledge keepers that are in your region medicine men medicine women ceremonial leaders they will understand the medicines to use singly and in combination that will help you to strengthen your immune system those knowledge keepers have become vitally important to us and in our own home community of six nations we're so so very lucky to have uh, medicine women who have been working with medicines teaching medicines traveling to our other Haudenosaunee communities to teach about medicines they have apprentices and so things are, are shifting now to understand that everything that we need in this life to be strong, the creator put it in the natural world for us. So very, very important. Um, it's so important to know those knowledge keepers in your area and to uphold them and to ask them for the help that you need when you need it. There's also something really beautiful um, that I witnessed and it was on the nature of things. So I have an affinity for trees in my life. I, I think I inherited that from my mother. Um, tree medicine, just walking in the bush is medicine because the trees that are in the bush exude their breathing and their breath is medicine for us to breathe in. Um, there's uh, Seneca women who make medicine and when that medicine is, is ready to be cured, um, it's not necessarily um, just dried, but the medicines are all put together in a bag and those medicines are hung in specific trees so that the breath of those trees can get into the medicine and make it even more strong. So tree medicine is so, so important. And uh, I really wanna uphold all of those trees, you know, that we, um, that we have in our Carolinian forest here, but also in your area, in the Boreal Forest, wherever you are, the trees will have medicine for you. So thank you to Tanya, if you could uh, advance the slide. Ad and advance again. So I wanted to just share with you something that we developed at CAMH was an infographic. And we did this uh, for information during the time of the pandemic and you know um, when everybody was really upset scared um, not grounded uh, seeking and reaching out for help we wanted to use some concepts from our cultures that would uphold our people and strengthen our people and so we we did an infographic so i want to say to you that um, i'm going to show you two infographics this is the first one on cultural care concepts. The second one will be about how our language describes uh, well-being. Both of those infographics will be available on June the 25th on the CAMH website. And along with the infographics, both of them will be very special recordings uh, with the people who designed the infographic and with the language translators who were able to join us to talk about um, the meanings of well-being. And I, and I think, you know, when you hear those recordings, it uplifts us in a way that is really, really powerful. And so um, this first one, of course, if you look at the Anishinaabe uh, medicine wheel, this always begins in the East. And so this is about the power of the creator, of prayers, sharing stories and songs, praying for others, for, for yourself and for the world, using tobacco, using your spirit name to guide you. Could you advance the slide? The second one, of sweet grass in that south direction for the mind, understanding that the creator has infinite power, knowing that you are loved and prayed for da daily, knowing that um, 
you're working to keep a strong mind, a good mind that is clear for good decision making and learning, taking time to learn more of our languages to strengthen ourselves. Could you advance um, the west direction? Um, so this is the sage and the and thunder beings and the white buffalo. Being gentle to oneself and those around you. Uh, being patient. And these are, these are tough times. And so, you know, spiritually cleansing our home, making sure that there's no negativity in there. Hanging medicines where you live. Walking the land, picking medicines. Understanding that we're all in this together. And uh, looking at, you know, the, the Anishinaabe Moan uh, words and looking at the Mohawk words to describe, you know, the strength that we need at this time. And then our last circle is the white circle, uh, the white bear in the north direction, um, understanding the importance of the cedar, tea, uh, the cedar tea, washing our hands, eating our traditional foods, expressing ourselves and finding joy in dancing and in drumming and singing again. And um, having courage and fearlessness at this time, supporting one another and spending time on the land. Thank you. Could you advance this? slide. So this infographic is um, talking about mental health is health, which is a, a new um, tagline for CAMH as we rebranded. And so we asked uh, translators to sit with us during this time period and uh, to help us to understand what is mental health and how, how do we achieve well-being. And so this machif um, is, comes from um, the Gabriel Dumont um, Institute in, in Saskatoon and uh, Norman Fleury was our translator for this and he did it he did it word for word so next slide please this is the Cree and um, this is Angela Shishis and her sister Helen Parker who translated for us and provided these magnificent syllabics and uh, the Cree translation to be well and, and at peace is to be healed mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Next slide, please. So in Mohawk, um, to have a good mind, to be clear thinking, to make good decisions for self, family, and community. That means that your mind is not clouded by drugs, by alcohol, or, or by fear, or some of the negative emotions that, that can consume us, like anger and bitterness and hatred. Next slide, please. And then um, Anishinaabe Moan Ojibwe. They are being healed to think, to, uh, to, sorry, they are being healed to live a good life, to think healthy, to be physically well, and to have a good heart. And the final one, please. Um, this is interesting because uh, Inuktitut also has syllabics. And um, linguists will often say that syllabics is the highest form of writing. A good mind, healthy relationships. The person is valued by all the people and has a purpose in the community. And so this, this is a beautiful translation because it's, it's about the person and their gifts and being acknowledged in the community. So we want you to know that you are not alone. You've never been alone. Our sacred fire um, has been burning in our community with prayers daily at 8 in the morning and 8 at night that our medicine societies have been renewed. And when those societies have renewed their medicines, it's for the good of all. That we've had community-wide days of prayer and uh, asking the Creator to uh, help us, to protect us and care for us. And we've also had spiritually uplifting messages shared by our, our spiritual leaders, our faith keepers. And so um, one of the things that, that will help you during this time period is to know that you are much loved and you are prayed for. And you are never forgotten in, in, all, in your service in all of our communities, no matter what work you are doing. So I want to thank you for this opportunity to, to share these things with you and um, to um, have this time with you. And, and I know that we're, we have some time for questions. And so I'll, I'll turn it over to um, Sabrina now and to May and say Nyawa to you. Thank you. Fantastic, Diane. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Um, just looking in the chat pod and listening to you, um, your words of inspiration, your words of hope, your words of healing have been very um, helpful and kind and, and warm. 
um, in welcoming at this time. So I really do appreciate it. Um, I did want to turn it over to Dr. Doris Grinspan to give a couple of remarks, um, and then we can turn it over to the Q&A if that's okay. First to Diane. Diane, is it Kauntakwas? Yes, you're pretty Your good. real name? <laughs> Thank you. In which, uh, so fantastic, the presentation, inspiring and soothing and just beautiful, uh, filled with uh, heart and filled with content and filled with teachings. I have a question for you. Please. Yeah, and it will be a tough one. And maybe May <laughs> is my, my guru. <laughs> on all that has to do with First Nations and even with indigenous communities broadly, but I have never asked her this question. So here you go, Diane. Um, so they call you elder and you look awfully young to me. So explain to us <laughs> how, no, for real, I mean it. How does a person become an elder and who decides that? and how it happened. And I am just, of course, particularly interested on the feminist perspective to that also in women. Yes, Tell yes. Us a bit. Tell us a bit. Fabulous question. Mind. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I, um, <clears throat> I really believe one becomes an elder by the way that you walk in your life. And I don't think it has anything to do with age. And I talked to, to you earlier about my teacher at Six Nations as a Cuga faith keeper and uh, visiting with him one time and talking to him. And he asked me um, if he could look at my hand. And um, he said to me, um, uh, you're not 42 years old. He said, you're really 84. Of course, that was a number of years ago. That was 30 years ago. But he said, he said, you're really 84 because of what you know, how you've lived your life, how you um, are consistently learning and serving the creator. And he said, uh, he said, not, not to ever get caught in the age piece. It, it's about um, the extent of wisdom and knowledge and values and how you choose to live your life and how you are consistently involved in your own healing. You walk the talk. You have, um, you have a reputation for humility as a servant leader, and you have a reputation for integrity. And so that, those are the, the qualities that, that make the elder a really strong person. Well, it's, it's you. obvious you have that in spades. <laughs> now, now that you disclose your age, I need to say that that tranquility, <laughs> no, for real, that tranquility and that peace of mind, mm. it's, it's seen in your person. It's just beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for all the teachings and thank you for sharing and thank you for the advice and it was just inspiring and i'm sure and, and i try not to look too much at the chat because it was i wanted to to listen to you carefully uh, you need to know you had over 300 people listening to you oh. so no pressure i'm honored i'm honored that 300 people wanted to listen <laughs> and, and they didn't drop a bit it was just <laughs> inspiring diane thank you on behalf of our NAO. And your name, your real name, Kawantakuwas, is beautiful. Just Thank beautiful. You. Be which on Me behalf you. of all of us and our Thank you. Thank you, Doris. So, Diane, um, Diane oh, no. uh, one comment. Um, I was reading uh, some of the um, uh, messages on the chat, and a few people said that they could actually spell your smoke. Oh, so did I. So did I. Yeah, for from real. Judge, yeah, one was from down east, and I, I don't know where the other one was from, but but they, I they did had, too. They had the I, odor. Yeah. yeah, I'm so, so grateful for that. You know, yeah. that's just the, really the power of the Creator, 100. percent That's the medicine that you talk about. Yeah. yeah, it's you know I think for and some of the nurses were just saying you know we we absolutely needed something like this. Because I think a lot of times we, we fail to acknowledge that our, our own hearts and minds carry a lot of the things that, that, that we see and we do. Yeah. Um, so being mindful of, of what you're giving sometimes and, and what you need is really important. And that was the message that um, I took from your talk tonight. And 
yeah, I can't believe we've been doing this for so long. Going back to, to Doris's comment, and I had an elder, I, I asked somebody one time about, do we have enough elders in our community to, to teach our, our young people? And he said, yes. And I said, how do you recognize them? And he says, you look at the way they've lived their life. Yeah. And, and that's who you ask. They won't come to you, so you have to go to them. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, they they came out of the, the the woodworks in our communities during this pandemic. And they they were a big part of our our protection for our people and, uh, and our medicines, our wildlife. When you talked about the uh, the foods, the land foods, and and just the strength that 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 gives the people. So thank thank you for those reminders. Mm -hmm. You're so welcome. I, you know, I, I am a firm believer that um, as nations of our people, we need to support and help one another through ceremonies and traditional teachings, but also um, healing ceremonies. So I really encourage everyone, um, no matter where they come from, to, uh, to start setting up those healing ceremonies in your regions and, uh, and make sure you take care of each other, take care of the community. Thank you, Diane. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat part. If you're okay to take a couple of moments to answer them. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, there was one comment about more resources or descriptions of the medicines that you've talked about. Um, if there are actual resources, if we could include them into the resource link, that would be fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm always hesitant to do that because medicines are so local for the, where you come from. And I, I always want to uphold the local spiritual leaders, the medicine people in the regions. So I encourage people um, not to necessarily ask for a recipe or, or combination of medicines, but to really seek those medicines out um, from the knowledge keepers in your region. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, there is a comment from Barbara. Um, as a white woman, I find it extremely concerned going back and forth to our reserve for concerns of transmission of the disease. But more what, what is damaging and what I'll do, the damage I'll do by going back and forth from the reserve from going home. I'm wondering if this is someone, something that others are worried about or think about or, or are concerned about. Do you have any advice for Barbara or others who feel this way about what they can do? Yeah, I am. Um... I really, I feel for that, uh, for that, for Barbara, because, you know, she's going back and forth and she's doing good work and, you know, wanting to protect herself and others and probably going home to her family as well. So, you know, one of the things I think is really important daily is to um, make that offering of giving thanks because you're seeking high, the highest level of spiritual power for your protection and drinking medicine that will boost your immune system. And th those medicines are available in all of the regions that, that we come from. They're all there. Some of them are tree medicines. Some of them are plant medicines. Um, there's also um, places where you can order those medicines. So, you know, in our community, Ancestral Voices um, will, will do mail orders of, of medicines if you ask for them. Um, so you know, drinking medicine, strengthening your immune system, making those prayers every day, um, and also smudging, you know, smudging, um, what people don't understand about smudge, or maybe um, haven't really explored fully, is that um, that smudge that we use called sage is antibacterial as well as antiviral. There are medicines that our people have that are antibacterial and antiviral, and uh, the, the water lily being one of them. So this is, this is time for us to explore those kinds of things where we start to use them in our daily practice. It becomes part of who we are. And so we don't worry then so much about the transmission because we've made the prayer for our protection We've, we drank the medicine for building our immune systems and we've smudged, you know, ourselves, our cars, our offices when we're in community, smudging our homes. You know, we're, we're taking the precautions 
And don't forget that the ancestors are present with us in this time period. This is a turning point for Mother Earth. Like, make no mistake about it. What was, what was will never be again. Because isn't this what we prayed for? Was for a great awakening among the human family. Mm. Of all those things that are most important in life. We have had that awakening. Now we got to make the most of it. So, you know, embrace that, that the medicines, the prayers, the offerings, and uh, the spiritual practice every day. And, uh, and be fearless. Be fearless with what you're doing, knowing that you're serving the greater good. Thank you for those uh, words of wisdom. They've been really kind of um, interesting to ponder and think through. Go ahead, May. Uh, Diane, uh, you'd be interesting to know there was one writer who said that there was a sun shower and double rainbow in Toronto throughout your teaching. <laughs> yeah. How beautiful is that? Yeah. You know, the creator gives us messages all the time. We just have to be aware of it and, and appreciate it and give thanks. So thank you oh, to that writer. And I hope that writer will put out some tobacco or an offering to give. Yeah, thanks. that was uh, Carrie, Carrie Ackland. Oh, good. She left her name there. Great. That's beautiful. Thank you. There was another comment about whether we were able to share the teachings in the recording to the community. There was a registered practical nurse from Northern Ontario from Cochrane who would really be honored to be able to share some of this. Absolutely. You know, we make these recordings and we share these teachings because this is a new era for humanity. It's time for all of us to evolve spiritually. And so, you know, I could have, I could have couched those teachings in a particular um, uh, tribal tradition, nation tradition, but I gave them in a general sense so that people who are listening who are non-Indigenous also can relate to them and, and in your own faith tradition, do your own practice. The, the calling that we have as human family is to evolve spiritually. When you evolve spiritually, you unite as a human family, not to change who you are or to water anything down or pan Indianism, pan tribalism, or, you know, become this like universal citizen of the earth, you know, rooted nowhere, but belonging everywhere. It's not about that. It's about understanding the sacredness of who you are, standing in the medicine of how the creator made you with your gifts and your spiritual mandate being proud of your clan, your nation, um, your community, and bringing that unity forward. And so when you're, when you're strong in that, you don't worry about cultural appropriation. You don't worry about, you know, somebody taking from you because you're strong in knowing how powerful that spirit is when you connect with the spirit and it's between you and the spirit. So this is this is our time to evolve spiritually so if you look at the history of humanity what you see is an evolution of the physical body then you know what europeans would say oh we've lived through the time of the renaissance uh, we, we wouldn't say that on turtle island but they had an evolution of the mind over there and so then there was you know the last 500 years is an evolution of the heart so we have been we've chosen how to manage that heart whether we're going to be compassionate giving empathetic loving or not and you know we see the results of the not in, in the destruction of the earth so this is our time in this era of humanity to evolve spiritually and that's what these ceremonies and teachings are, are meant to do is to help us to um, gather our strength, start, it's a starting point for something and somewhere. And that sacred fire really is the starting point. That's why I wanted to make sure that everybody got that teaching because when you're at the sacred fire, it's between you and the creator. And you know, the messages, the dreams, the visions that will come to you, it's between you and the creator. So that's what makes that fire so powerful. These, these messages are meant to be shared now so that everybody can become strong. Thank you. Uh, Diane, you have another comment here, uh, who someone says she's a frontline worker um, and she is ready to give up and she's going to start the sun ceremony to get her strength back. So she's 
that she's lost trying to fight for her community. I'm so, so proud of her. That's how All inspiring it takes, you were. Yeah. Yeah. All it takes is one person to initiate the change. She's the change. I'll pray for you. You're going to be successful and pretty soon you're going to see young people around you who want to do the same and then you know they bring their buddies and then you know moms start to come dads start to come then the grandparents come you know it's a movement it really is a movement because people will see how did you achieve your strength how did you achieve the peace that you're carrying now and how is it that your mind doesn't go to the negative but you have a really strong capacity to turn negative into positive they're going to want to know that and you're going to have a lot to teach Um, she looks like an, no, okay. Um, yeah, I was just gonna. Uh, uh, that's good. Fine. <laughs> go for it, May. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm done. I was just related to the last speaker. So thank you, Diane. Thank that's you. Beautiful. Hi, there is a question about um, a, an individual who's finding it challenging to smudge at work because of allergy issues. Are there alternatives or any suggestions that you could provide mm -hmm. that can help? I think, um, I think that, um, you know, that, that becomes a, a challenging issue for um, human rights, first of all. It becomes a challenging issue for um, management um, to consider what is, um, what is, what is that individual's right to smudge and, and to do that within the office? And I, you know, I, that's a challenge we faced at, at CAMH and uh, won that battle and then won the battle for, um, not really a battle, but, you know, um, building the ceremony grounds and making sure that, that um, our people had what they needed. Um, so what I would suggest is that there, there's alternatives to smudging. And that is you can make some cedar tea at home and put it in a spray bottle and you can spray yourself, spray in your office as well. Uh, what we often find is um, uh, smudging with um, sweet grass is <clears throat> sometimes <clears throat> easier for people who have allergies uh, because it's a real light and a, a sweet smell and it dissipates um, fairly quickly. Uh, but I want to, I want to hold this up to the screen and I want to show you uh, this root called we can we can so it grows in water and uh, it almost has leaves on it that looks like um, an iris and so this we can when you when you clean it all off um, that is a really powerful smudge and i will often smudge with it because it is the most powerful of all the smudges and it defeats negative and so um, you only have to light the tip of it and it gives you a little wee smoke going up and you can breathe it in. You can put the ash on top of your hair at the end and, um, and it gives you everything that you need for your healing and for your protection. And it takes your prayers to the creator. So that, that weekend is, is um, something that if you burn it in your office, most people can't smell it. Uh, may I write it on, on the on the chat? <laughs> okay, so we do a similar spelling. We just say we can. It's W E K A E, but uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that's how I learned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um. The, the knowledge keepers in, in your area will, will help you to find it. And um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what the botanic, botanical name is. Um, we only name our medicines in our language. Um, yeah. So that's how we recognize them as well as when you pick them. Mm -hmm. The individual who asked that question is actually asking how they can um, access we can. Uh, or any it's elder will have weekend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, there are a couple more questions, but Diane, we could probably talk about asking those offline. 
Um, I think the most important one, not the most important ones, but the ones that were of similar themes we've asked right now. Mm -hmm. There was one comment I just wanted to share. I thought it was just absolutely beautiful to help us end and conclude the webinar. Is thank you, Diane. This was the most incredible webinar that I've ever been to. Today, we need more than ever the wisdom of Indigenous people to remind us how to survive and live a life of harmony. I send you my blessings and thank you again. Thank you so much. How beautiful. Thank you. I so appreciate those words. And to our participants, um, our time is now up. I really do thank you for being with us today. Um, and again, uh, thank you. And please help me thank you, Diane, May, um, and our panelists today. Really appreciate all your energy, your enthusiasm, um, and uh, miigwech to everyone that's on the call with us today. Just to wrap up, you will receive an email from Tanya Costa with an evaluation link for today's webinar. Please fill this in as a survey will greatly help us. There is a particular question as well if you would like additional webinars on this topic because that's something of us that's very important to know in order to be able to help and support you where you're at. Um, upon completion of the evaluation link, there will be a link of where you can access your certificate of completion for today. Please note that the evaluation will close within two weeks periods. Should you require a certificate for attendance, please ensure you complete the form within the two week period. We hope you will join us for the upcoming webinars in the session um, that we will be planning as, as we go forward. There are a couple more that we are, are planning, so please do stay tuned. Um, and please visit the RNAO website, the RNAO COVID portal website. Um, and if you have any questions, we're only an email and a phone call away. And thank you and have a great evening. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, well, thank you, Diane. Wonderful. Bye thank bye. you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Goodbye, my RNAO sisters. Goodbye, bye. my darling. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye now. Take care, bye. everybody. Thank you, Sabrina and um, and Tanya, Tanya, you may want to send the the comments in the chat to Diane, she will love them. I definitely will. Yeah, and I don't mind if you send to me too, because I didn't read through the, I was listening to her, so I just would love to see them too. Definitely, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks all. Awesome. Just awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs>